Welcome to this week's installment of Weather Extra here on CBSN, where we go in depth on subjects that relate to the weather here in Northern California. Today, I want to focus on something that you maybe have heard mentioned a lot more often in the news over the last few years. The word pyrocumulus. We've been seeing a lot of these lately. And this is one over my shoulder. It's clear that we've entered a new fire regime in the Western US. And it's required a whole set of new terms to better explain what we're seeing. Pyrocumulus clouds have been around for a long time. They're not new but we're seeing a lot more of them. And particularly this summer, it seems as though almost every fire that gets started in the Western US, including here in California, has been spawning these. Here's one from earlier in the week. And this is the fire that was burning up in Plumas County. You can definitely see plenty of gray on here showing you where the smoke is. That's your typical smoke plume. But if you look at the top, it looks very different. The colors change. It goes from gray to white, and that's where this actually goes into pyrocumulus territory, where we start to develop a cloud. There are a lot of unique aspects to this, so let's start to talk about this, and the first way to do it is to at least define what we're talking about. Pyrocumulus. Let's break that down. Pyro means fire. Cumulus is, is a form of cloud in its own right, a cumulus cloud. They're basically the puffy cotton ball looking clouds. If you want to get specific, uh, the word comes from a translation of heap or, you know, to pile up, cauliflower like looking clouds. You put the two together, pyrocumulus is how we come up with that word. So there's a lot of meaning that goes into this. If you want to go deeper into the weeds and get more scientific and maybe even have a little more fun with it, how about the word phlegmogenitis? which means exactly what you might already think, flamogenitis, flam for flame, genitis for genesis, flame formed is another way. That, that one doesn't come up as often, but it sounds a little cooler. Flamogenitis, although pyrocumulus sounds cool enough in its own right. Let's break these things down. The first thing you need is a fire that's burning intensely hot. And we certainly have more than our fair share of that now throughout the Western US. So we begin with the flame. The next thing that happens from that is you get your smoke plume. Everything's normal at this point. These are the wildfire smoke plumes that we're used to seeing that don't necessarily catch our attention all that much. But at a certain point, that smoke plume begins to rise exceptionally fast because the landscape is so primed to, uh, for fire now with the conditions being historically dry. The fires that are forming now are burning intensely hot. And that intense amount of heat forces that smoke plume to rise even faster with greater force. What's happening with these now is they're getting up to a point in the atmosphere where they're cooling. Because they're going so high, the atmosphere is cooler once you get to a certain level. And these new fires are throwing those smoke plumes exceptionally high into the atmosphere. They also happen to be pulling up some water vapor with them, as all fires do. You're burning plants and trees and all that stuff. There's water vapor in there, believe it or not. So now you're taking this water vapor in the smoke plume, you're throwing it into the atmosphere exceptionally fast. And then you get to this point right here where you can see we change from gray smoke to white cloud. It's at this point where the real magic happens in terms of a pyrocumulus cloud. Because at this point, the smoke plume has gotten so high, the atmosphere is cool enough that we're taking that water vapor we've thrown way up into the air and we've cooled it down, believe it or not, to a point where it starts to recondense into water droplets again. And that releases an enormous amount of energy. If you take water vapor, turn it into a drop of water, you're releasing something called latent heat you can kind of think of it as almost like a small little bomb. It takes so much energy that that actually releases heat. Now we've got a whole different process happening. At this point, you don't see smoke anymore. You see an actual cloud building because there's so much heat generated now at this level, that hot air begins to rise on its own right just because of all the release of that latent heat energy that we've got there. So when you look at a pyrocumulus cloud, you're not looking at a plume of smoke anymore. That plume of smoke only goes to right about here. From that point on, you've got something totally different, something that we hadn't really seen all that often until about the last five to 10 years when we entered this new fire regime. Now, you can build these clouds exceptionally high because you now have two engines of heat 
forcing them to rise. You've got the intense heat of the fire throwing it upwards. And then right here at that transition point, now you're releasing all this latent heat, which forces the cloud to rise even higher and faster. At a certain point, some of these clouds, the upward drafts, the upward vertical velocity of the air in these clouds is over 100 miles an hour. Think about that for a second. The air is rising that fast. And that can throw these things very high into the atmosphere. Then other things start to happen. If these clouds go high enough with enough moisture, remember we're developing a regular cumulus cloud here, but the whole thing's a pyrocumulus. They can redevelop as actual thunderstorms. You can get rain. You can get strong downdrafts with rain, and most concerning, they can also start to develop lightning, just like a regular thunderstorm would. Now they get so high, here's another view from earlier this week. This has been the pyrocumulus cloud that's really been making the headlines. It's from the fire that's been burning in Oregon this week. If you look at that, it's casting shadows. You've got the smoke down here from the fire. You can see how high the clouds are going there, and that cloud going up to now casting shadows on the regular old smoke plume down below it. That then enables these things to throw so much smoke so high into the atmosphere, it can then spread for thousands of miles, which is one other aspect of pyrocumulus clouds. There's a lot still to learn about these, but I think the important thing is that we at least start getting comfortable with the terminology because we're going to be seeing, as we have already, a lot of them, and the word's gonna be used a lot in newscasts, so it's best that we at least have some general understanding that takes a five to six minute explanation like this beyond what we could ever really set aside in an actual newscast, which is why we're doing Weather Extra. Thanks for tuning in for this one.